Let's move on to two-dimensional objects now. And let's find the electric field at point P, that's on the x-axis, near a disk of charge with radius R, so this is radius R, and net charge Q. We're going to assume that the charge is uniformly distributed. We're going to use our same process here. We're going to pick some element of charge DQ. We're going to look at the electric field made by DQ. And then we're going to find the total electric field by adding up all the bits of electric field. The trick here is how do we pick DQ? Well, we want to pick a DQ so that if we add up the field due to each DQ, it's going to give us the total field. We also want to pick some sort of DQ for which we can write down the electric field. So let's think, what have we done that kind of looks like a disk? Well, on our last page, we did a ring. So here was our ring of charge. Let's say this is our disk of charge. A ring could be an element of charge. So if we find the electric field due to a little ring here, a little ring here, a little ring here, a little ring here, ring here, ring here, we could add up all the electric fields due to all those rings, and it would give us the total electric field. So the DQ we're going to pick is going to be a thin ring. Let's give it radius A. Let's give it a thickness that we'll call dA, and we say dA because it's a small a little bit in that radial distance, and it's going to have total charge dQ. Okay, I'll try and draw that on my picture. So a thin ring, it has radius A, it has thickness dA, um, and total charge dQ, and then while we're at it, if we wish, we can put on the radius of the entire disk. Okay, so there's our dQ. Next, we'll write down our dE. Our next step now is to draw our electric field element, so we want to draw dE. What we know is that the electric field, due to a ring of charge, points all in the x direction. That's because the electric field of the top half, the y component of the electric field from the top half, cancels with the y component of the electric field from the bottom half. The electric field, the z component from the back half, cancels with the z component of the electric field from the front half, and all of the z components add up. So our element of electric field, the bit of electric field made by that bit of charge, dQ, is going to point all in the positive x direction. I'm going to label that d. Okay, that step is done. Now let's write down an expression for our dE. Well, let's use the expression we got when we did the ring of charge. What we found was that the electric field due to a ring of charge was k times the distance x divided by a squared, where a was the radius of the ring, plus x squared, to the power of 3 over 2. Now the next bit is we had all of this stuff and then we multiplied by the charge on the ring. With our last example, we called the charge on the ring Q. So we had a Q right here in our expression. In this example, we're saying that the charge on the ring is DQ. So we'll write DQ in this expression. Because it's a vector, we're going to say that that's in the x direction I had. Okay, so there's our expression for DE. Now our next step needs to be to find our electric field. And we find E by adding up all the little bits of DE. So we have to do the integral. That's our next step. So let's fill in for our DE here. So E is equal to the integral of DE, which is K times X times DQ divided by a squared plus x squared to the 3 over 2. And that's all in the i direction. Um, so let's see, let's make sure we know what x is. It's our distance from our center to our point. There we go. So next we have to deal with dq. And when we did lines of charge, we said that dq was the linear charge density lambda times the length. So that was something we did in one dimension. Lambda was the total charge divided by the total length. 
So a little amount of charge was that density times the little length. Sometimes we use dx and sometimes dy and sometimes ds. Okay, well, we don't have a line of charge now. We have a two-dimensional disk of charge. So let's recall what we're supposed to do in two dimensions. In two dimensions, we use area charge density. That has a symbol of sigma, and it's the net charge divided by the net area. It has units of coulombs over meters squared. So a little bit of charge, so the amount of charge on this little ring, is going to be the charge density sigma, times the little bit of area, dA. Okay, now what we have to do is figure out what is dA, what's the area of this ring? So to find our dQ, what we want to know is what is the area of this little ring? So let's see if we can think about that. We know an area would be a length times a thickness. The thickness part is not so hard. We said it was dA, but what's the length of that ring? can't see that right away. There is a visualization that might help. So here was our ring. What if we took our ring and we just unrolled it? I think I have to pull back a little bit. So if I take my ring and I unroll it, you might notice that now it looks like a rectangle. So here it's a circle, here it's a rectangle. Maybe that can help you visualize how we're supposed to find the length. So the thickness or the width is dA. The length is just going to be the circumference, 2 pi a. So the area of our little ring of charge is length times width, 2 pi a times the thickness, dA. So let's write down our result for our thin ring, our element of charge. dQ is equal to density times the area of the ring. Our density is our density sigma. The area of the ring is the length times the width. The length was the circumference, 2 pi a, and the width is what we called dA. As a reminder, we might fill in here that sigma is our total charge divided by our total area, pi r squared for the whole disk. Okay, let's put this in for our dQ, and then we'll get solving for our e. Okay, let's start putting it all together. Our total electric field is the integral of k times dq, but we said dq was sigma times 2 times pi times a times dA, and then that's all divided by a squared plus x squared to the power of 3 over 2, and it's in the positive x direction i hat. Let's put in the limits of our integral. So we're integrating, we're adding up the bits due to all the rings. So we'll start at the center where a equals zero, that's the smallest, and we'll stop at the outside where a equals r. That gives us a sum over the entire disk. So we're gonna start at a equals zero and we're gonna stop at a equals r. Um, if you wish, you can do this integral by hand or you can just look up the result in the book. So my constants come out front k times x times sigma times 2 times pi times a. Then inside we've got the integral from 0 to, oh my goodness, I popped my a outside, that belonged inside. Just erase it and put it back in. a dA divided by a squared plus x squared to the 3 over 2 in the x direction. Okay, that looks good. All right, so you can do your integral by hand or you can look it up in a book if you look it up. We'll just write down the expression of what we get. We get minus 1 over the square root of a squared plus x squared. We have to evaluate that at r and 0. And that's in the i direction, so that means we fill in x equals r and x equals 0. And let's see, I think I have enough room to fill that in on this slide. So our e is going to be k times x times sigma times 2 pi outside of minus 1 over. So first we fill in a equals r, that's r squared plus x squared. Subtract negative 1 over the square root. Next we fill in a equals 0, 0 squared plus x squared. That's all in the i direction. Okay, we'll just double check and make sure that all looks good minus times a minus gives us a plus. This expression looks good. We'll just finish it up now on the next slide.
Our answer is more or less done here, but we can simplify it a bit further. So we could remember that k, our Coulomb's constant, is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. Epsilon naught is the perma permittivity of free space. And I'm going to take this x here, and I'm going to multiply it into both of these terms. So that leaves me out front with sigma times 2 pi. And on the inside, I've got minus x, because I'm multiplying my x in through divided by the square root of r squared plus x squared. My second term, I've got plus 1. My x comes inside. I've multiplied it in. And in the denominator, I've got the square root of x squared, which is just x. OK, let's see what cancels here. x divided by x, that whole thing is 1. I've got a pi on top here, a pi on bottom here, so they cancel. My 2 goes into the 4, leaves me with a 2 on the bottom. So that gives me an electric field is equal to sigma over 2 epsilon naught outside of minus x. Oh, why don't I just write the 1 first? So I'll bring my 1 from over there first. I'll just swap those positions. 1 subtract x over the square root of x squared plus r squared in the x direction. So there's my electric field around a two-dimensional disk of charge with total charge q and radius r. We come to our last two-dimensional object we'll look at for now, and let's find the electric field near an infinite plane of charge. Um, and we mean a thin plane of charge, so this is two-dimensional. So let's ask, what do we mean by a plane of charge? Well, a plane of charge could be considered to be the same thing as a disk, but where the radius goes to infinity. So the radius goes out forever, that turns it into a plane. So our electric field, due to our plane of charge, would be sigma over 2 epsilon naught times 1 minus x over the square root of x squared plus r squared. If we let r go to infinity, then this entire term goes to 0. That tells us that the electric field due to a plane of charge is sigma over 2 epsilon naught. And the direction, um, if sigma is positive, then the electric field is away. And if sigma is negative, then the electric field is toward. OK, so there's the electric field around a plane of charge. The last thing we'll do in this chapter is introduce a device that we talk about quite a bit, and that's a capacitor. A capacitor is what we get when we take two planes of charge and we put them together. So what is a capacitor? It's two plates. They have equal and opposite charge, so same magnitude of charge, one's positive, one's negative. Um, they're separated by a distance d. And that distance d is always a good bit smaller than the area of the plates. So the area of the plates we might call A. And the area or the linear dimension of the plates is much bigger than D. So something we'd like to figure out is the electric field in the vicinity of a capacitor. What we can do is because a capacitor has two plates, so this is a picture of a capacitor here, because a capacitor has two plates, we can find the electric field due to each one and add up both those fields. Let's start to find the electric field around a capacitor with a sketch. Let's start by looking at the 3D model. I'm going to call my red plate the negative plate, and I'm going to call my blue plate the positive plate. I know that my electric field lines go into a negative plate. So like this, and I know that they go out of a positive plate. There are my field lines around my red plate. They go out of my positive, so in each direction they're going away from the blue plate. Um, looking at this diagram, you might say that this is a complete mess. I would tend to concur, so let's take a look at a side view instead. In the 2D image, my red is still going to be negative, and my blue is still going to be positive. I get the same behavior. My electric field lines go into the negative. Notice they go through all of space, so they're everywhere on top and on bottom, and in the middle between the two plates. 
So there are my electric field lines due to the positive plate, E plus. My electric field lines due to the negative plate are going to be coming away from my positive. So those are my E due to the negative plate. I'd like to find my net electric field in each of three regions, up above the red plate, in between the two plates, and down below the blue plate, regions one, two, and three. To do that, I'm going to have to use my expression for the electric field around a plane, which is that it's equal to sigma over two epsilon naught, where epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space. And that's 8.85, I think I can squeeze it in down here, times 10 to the minus 12. Um, oh my goodness, the units. The units are Coulomb squared over Newton's meters squared. Sometimes it takes me a second to remember. There we go. So for my electric field in region one, my electric field is a vector. So the direction matters. I'll take positive x to the right, positive y up. My electric field in region 1 is the electric field due to the positive plate added to the electric field due to the negative plate. My positive plate will have an electric field that points down, so it's going to be in the negative j direction with a magnitude of sigma over 2 epsilon naught, remembering that sigma is the charge density. Um, so that's down, so it's negative. My Electric field due to the negative plate up here in this region, it points up, so that one is positive, plus sigma over 2 epsilon naught j hat. Uh, notice that those two guys are equal and opposite, sums up to be zero. Let's do region two, so in the middle next, the electric field in region two, same idea, the E of the red plate e to, added to the E of the blue plate. This time, both of those fields point up. The red vectors point up and the blue vectors point up. They're both in the plus j direction. So I've got plus sigma over 2 epsilon naught j, plus sigma over 2 epsilon naught j to give me sigma over epsilon naught j. So there's my electric field in between. My electric field outside of the blue plate, so down below in this picture, my red vectors point up, they're going to be in plus j. My blue vectors point down, they're going to be in negative j. So I've got plus sigma over 2 epsilon naught j minus sigma over 2 epsilon naught j to give me 0 again. So what we see here is that our electric field is 0 when we're outside the plates, and it's sigma over epsilon naught when we're inside the plate. The direction, more generically, is from the positive to the negative. So my electric field around a capacitor, just change colors, is electric field equals sigma over epsilon naught from positive to negative.